Hi everybody, it's Elham and I'm so happy to be here with you today to talk to you about guess what? pH measurement and adjustment in cosmetic formulation. For those of you who are new here, I am Elham, the founder of Skin Chakra, the place to purchase excellent quality cosmetic raw material and to learn how to formulate like a cosmetic chemist. And for those of you who are not new here and you know me, I have been bugging you with my favorite theme, which is pH measurement and adjustment all through the last 10 years at least. And I'm going to continue it till you are going to measure the pH like a born cosmetic chemist. So follow me to the computer. I'm going to make it short and painless as the Germans say. And I'm going to walk you through the necessity of pH measurement and adjustment and how you can master this very important fact. Here we go. Grab a cup of tea and join me through this short webinar. Maybe you can find the answer to your questions. Maybe you find 10 more questions to ask, but in any case, you will not go empty handed from this webinar. You have already realized that I'm obsessed with pH measurement adjustment. If you have watched our videos or read our blog post and the question is why pH measurement is so important in cosmetic formulation specifically in natural cosmetic formulation. pH measurement is a fundament and a pillar and the holy grail of making safe, stable, efficient and compliant personal care and it is one of the easiest but most effective components of GMP, GLP and QC. These are good laboratory practice, good manufacturing practice and quality control. If you are producing cosmetic products in the European Union and most parts of the world, you have to comply with GMP. You mustn't be certified, but you need to comply with GMP. And pH measurement is one of the cheapest, easiest, fastest tests that you can apply and implement in your GMP. Efficacy, stability, safety, change of texture, change of color. And yet, Despite all of this importance, it is very superficially discussed in all of the formulation schools and diploma of this and diploma of that. And even at the university level, it is very superficially discussed. You probably, if you have uh, participated in one of these formulation classes, you know that you have to measure, adjust the pH, but nobody tells you why, how, when, and what you shall do with the results and how you can change the results or bring the range to the range that is required for that certain formulation. And this is the whole purpose of this webinar today. Well, obviously, the first reason and the most important reason we want to measure and adjust the pH of personal care products is to maintain the integrity of the skin, which is the main purpose of every skincare product. You are probably aware that the skin has a slightly acidic pH. It's about 5 to 5.5. This pH uh, changes with aging, with uh, climate, with nutrition, even it, it is different at different body sites, but basically our skin has a slightly acidic pH, which is called the acid mantle. 
if the acid mantle is disrupted, the barrier function is disrupted, and that increases the uh, transepidermal water loss. It uh, increases the uh, skin dryness. It uh, even damages the lower parts of the skin, and it allows the pathogens to enter our body. And that is all what we want to avoid with using skincare products. Another reason to take care of the pH of the product, not just the end product, but during the whole process of manufacturing, is the safety of each individual ingredient and the overall product. Most cosmetic ingredients are basically considered safe, but some of them may change their form uh, by varying pH and they become probably sensitizing. If not dangerous and harmful, they may become sensitizing. The best example of that is the nicotinamide that you all know has a very narrow range for application and at a higher pH range or a much lower pH range, it becomes nicotinic acid that is sensitizing. The stability is another reason why we have to take care of the pH of the product. Not only the product, but the stability of individual ingredients is dependent on the pH. For most of the cosmetic ingredients, if you have a look at the data sheet, a certain pH range is recommended for their application. They degrade and at a pH lower than, than this range or at a pH higher than this range. And that will impact the stability of the complete product. The solubility of most of the ingredients is as well uh, pH dependent. You have probably experienced this specifically with low viscosity products with uh, surfactant containing products, products such as foam, micellar water, or toner that is very easy to, uh, to be seen. Uh, with emulsions, it is not that uh, obvious at the beginning, but with low viscosity products and, and water-based products, it is very easily seen that if you change the pH slightly, some of the ingredients in your product with sediment that will cause turbidity that will cause uh, cloudiness, and at the end, it will cause sedimentation and phase separation. The performance and efficacy of each individual ingredient is as well dependent on the pH. That is, again, often explained in the pr uh, ingredient brochure or uh, documentation. And so the cosmetic product is a combination of several individual ingredients and the pH of the finished product must be in the range that so that each individual ingredient has its performance and efficacy pH. If uh, the product doesn't break completely uh, in two phases, then at least it will become useless and that is not what we uh, aim. As a cosmetic manufacturer, you want to keep the uniformity between batch to batch. So it means that if you create a certain product in 10 batches, usually must all of these products be the same or look the same or work the same. So as a, as a DIYer, you can afford to create uh, the same product in different forms and colors and uh, variations, but when it comes a professional product, you must keep each batch like the, the other batch. That is a pre-requirement because your customer demands uh, this uh, uniformity. And since the performance of most of cosmetic ingredients Specifically, the foam of the surfactants depends on the pH. You need to keep a uniformity between each batch, which demands exact measurement and adjustment of the pH, so that each batch of your product is similar to the previous batch, and you don't have any deviation between different batches. 
One of the most important reasons, specifically when we are working with natural ingredients, is that the color of the most natural products, specifically plant extracts, is pH dependent. So when you are working with natural extracts and natural plant powders and uh, pigment powders, the outcome is very often pH dependent. So by changing the pH, the color would be completely changed. Sometimes this change is reversible and you can repair it if something goes wrong. Sometimes this color change is even not reversible. And so if you aim a beautiful red or orange color and land in a in other pH range and your color turns out a muddy brown or a, an ugly greenish, uh, you have no chance to repair it and you have to discard that, that batch and uh, go over again and take care of the pH. You have perhaps ha at this experience that you create a colorful shampoo, shower gel, something, and then as you add the acid or add the base to adjust the pH, you have probably observed that where you drop the acid or the base, the color changes. This is very often reversible, as I mentioned, but uh, and in small quantities when you are adding your acid or base, drop by drop, and then stir uh, in between each addition, uh, you can go to the color and pH that you want, but if you uh, very um, suddenly add a huge amounts of acid or base to the product, then the color change might be even irreversible and no chance to repair it or go to the desired color and pH. But the most important reason that is as important as your life depends on it is the performance of natural preservatives. Most natural preservatives have a pH dependent performance and this is the highest, highest, highest priority in cosmetic manufacturing that you manufacture a product that is safe and uncontaminated. Selling a contaminated product is a crime in all parts of the world. So this is something that your life depends on it. Let's have a look at the efficacy and performance of some of weak acids that are usually uh, used in uh, preservatives, specifically in natural preservatives or natural conform preservatives. These components are sold either standalone or are combined in commercial preservative blends. If you have a look at the data sheet of your preservatives, you will find at least one of them very probably in the data sheet. They are benzoic acid and its salts, uh, usually sodium benzoate, sorbic acid, and usually potassium sorbate, salicylic acid, DHA, dehydroacetic acid, and levulinic acid or sodium levulinate. And have a look at the pH. At the pH of three, they all, all of them have a very good performance and efficacy. As you come to the pH of 5 and 6, most of them become pretty much useless. As a P at the pH of 7, some of them are absolutely useless, or all of them actually are absolutely useless. So you have a preservative blend and you think that you are preserving your product, but if the pH is not in the range that is required for the efficacy of that preservative, the preservative becomes useless. Although you aim and you want to preserve the product, the preservative doesn't work. And until your microbial results are out and you realize that the preservative has failed and your product is 
contaminated, it takes depends on the test that you are doing between a few days. If you are um, outsourcing your test, the results come within a few weeks. So you have invested huge amounts of time and money in raw material, in uh, manufacturing procedure, even in packaging, and then uh, you realize that your preservative has failed and has not worked. The, the other scenario or the worst scenario is when your product is on the market. So you have to recall the product, call the product back, uh, refund the customers, ju just to name a few of the uh, damages that uh, happen if you don't take care of the pH of the product. To make it short and painless, the safety, stability, efficacy, performance, optic, and compliance of your product no matter where you are in the world, all depends on the pH. So you understand why I say your life literally depends on the pH measurement and adjustment. So we come to the question, so what? What shall we do? Start measuring the pH like a professional and like a cosmetic chemist right now. I don't know if you already have a pH meter or are you using a pH paper, an indicator paper? Hopefully you are doing something at least. Anything is better than doing nothing. So please, please, for your own safety and for the safety of your family and friends, if you are a DIYer and for the safety of your customers and for the maintenance of your business, take care of this important step in cosmetic manufacturing. You don't really need a state-of-the-art pH meter and don't wait till you have a state-of-the-art pH meter till you can uh, measure the pH. Most of us cannot afford a, an expensive pH meter at the beginning. But an affordable and reliable pH meter is cheaper than one dining out. Even if you go to a diner, not a, not a cheeky picky restaurant, a P affordable pH meter is lower than $20, $25, and it is really cheaper than dining out. So purchase an affordable and reliable pH meter if you don't have any, and if you have yours, do not become intimidated by, by the look of it and by the process of calibration and measurement. Start measuring the pH of your products right now after you have watched this webinar. Go and find your pH meter or go and purchase your pH meter and start measuring the pH of your products. If you are not sure how to start, that brings us, my friends and dear formulators, to the first online course completely dedicated to the subject of measuring and adjusting the pH of cosmetic products. This course is the essence of my work during the last 10 years at least. I have been working on the course for the last three years somehow collecting your questions, your challenges, my own experiences, all in this course. It contains nine intensive modules. It walks you step by step through all necessary steps for measuring the pH of raw material and finished products, as well as adjusting the pH of uh, every type of cosmetic product. At the end of this course, you will be able to measure the pH of each product and raw material without breaking into tears. You will be able to adjust the pH of each cosmetic product you make with the confidence and accuracy of a born cosmetic chemist. You will learn how to choose a suitable pH meter 
for your laboratory and how to take care of the pH meter and the electrode to prolong its shelf life and to get reliable and reproducible results. This is a very common question coming to our help desk. You will learn about buffering, when and how you need to buffer a formulation, and you will learn about implementing the pH measurement in your GMP and stability testing program. Through this course, you will find the answer to your to some of your questions, such as why you need to make a dilution for pH measurements. Do you always need a dilution to, to measure the pH? Is it possible to skip the dilution? And when it is possible to skip the dilution? Which ingredients you need for decreasing or increasing the pH? You will have two years time to go through these nine modules one by one, pass each module and go to the proceed to the next one, which is uh, quite a long time if you ask me. I, I'm sure most of you will finish this course uh, in less than one year. But for two years from the day of enrollment, we are going to accompany you uh, through this course a week monthly live Q and A's with me and with my team so that you can uh, come and ask your questions, show your samples, uh, get instruction and advice. You will be a member in a closed Facebook group that is only dedicated to this course and all of the members are the ones who have enrolled in the course so that you can exchange your experience with all of you, uh, with your peers and uh, talk about uh, certain issues or problems or, or, or exchange your thoughts. That brings us to the most important part of the webinar and probably to your questions. You can see the, uh, the course starts uh, on March 22nd. The enrollment starts on March 8th. This is our first launch. And because of that, you are getting the first launch price if you enroll in this semester. From the next semester, we are going to have the full price, but for this semester, since there are possible hiccups, technical problems, uh, typos in the text, uh, you will have the advantage of uh, having the discount for the first launch. The early bed price uh, is even lower than the first launch, so if you hurry up, uh, you, you can get the early bird price that is six forty nine ninety, and the early bird registration closes on March fourteen, so you don't have much time to dilly dally, and the enrollment terminates on March twenty first because we are going all together to start on March twenty second. If there are any other questions. Uh, you can just uh, send us your questions and ask about more details, but I think I have cleared everything. This is the link uh, for the enrollment, uh, for the pricing again, and to answer most of your questions. I'm sure that these days nobody has time to read long texts or, uh, or the patients to go through texts and anybody needs a quick answer, but here is the link again for the information with all of the pricing information and the uh, information about the modules and uh, for whom is this uh, course suitable, for whom it may not be that suitable, and uh, that's the, the, all the information that you will need. Despite all of the information, if there are individual questions, send us a question uh, through the, the email address. And I hope to see as many as you uh, in the course. And I hope that you can grab this opportunity, specifically now that we have a low price for the first launch. I wish you success and good luck with all your experiments.